Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another exciting lesson from SAGET Tech. My name is Asaf, and I hope you enjoy this one. But please, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below this video for us to be able to keep on producing more and more of these wonderful lessons. Today's lesson is on technology grade seven, and our topic is electrical systems and control. We'll be focusing on simple electric circuits. Let us start straight away with um, electric circuits. And we are saying an electric circuit is a path, path through which electric current flow from the voltage source throughout the various components of the circuit. Current flows from positive terminal of the cell, which is our voltage supply, through the resistive components of the cell and back to the negative terminal of the cell. For current to flow, there should be a closed path and a device like a bulb with a certain amount of resistance connected. Now, very, very important that you put a device or that will um, consume some energy in the circuit, which means the device that is resistive, so that the pressure at the beginning end of your circuit is not the same as the pressure at the end point of your circuit. Because if the pressure is the same, then that particular circuit is a short circuit and current will never flow. It will cause a short circuit, it will cause a spark. Now, it's just like the flow of water. If you have a tank on the ground level and you want water to flow from the tank to the geyser, you are going to have a problem that the pressure at the tank might be the same as the pressure at the geyser. Therefore, water will not will never flow. There must be difference in pressure for water to flow. That is why the water tanks are always elevated, put on a tank stand so that the pressure it's higher at the tank uh, and it's lower at the geyser so water can keep flowing. And for those tanks that are uh, lowered and put on the ground, we always have what we call a pressure pump, which increases the pressure on the side of the tank so that the pressure at the tank is lesser than the pressure at the geyser and water can therefore start flowing. Current flow just the same as the water. Now, for current to flow, we must have the voltage source. And in this regard, our voltage source will be a cell, which is a device in which chemical energy is transferred into uh, electrical energy. It, it, the cell itself does have a chemical energy inside, but what flows through the circuit is no more chemical, it's electrical. And this is how the cell look like. There's a very small dry cell. And when two or more cells are connected together to perform a duty, they form what we call a battery. They must be connected together to, to um, for make a battery. You've got cells like this. These are two cells adjacent to each other. Do they form the battery? No. They are just cells, not a battery. They only become the battery when they are connected like this and can perform a duty. If they cannot give us the voltage and allow current to flow through the circuit yeah, because of their or owing to their connection, then they are not, uh, they, they don't form the battery. They are just cells next to each other. I think you understood. Now, coming to simple circuits, here is a simple uh, electric circuit. It has a lamp, it has a cell and a switch. Let's look at the circuit. Now, let's label the circuit. What we're having here is a cell. That's the first component that we're having. Uh, we also have a little switch. We also have the uh, conducting wires. And we as well have a lamp. Now, I've had this question in the past as to what is the difference between a lamp and a bulb? It's a bit confusing to some of the people, but there's a difference between the two. You see, a lamp is a combination of a bulb and a bulb holder like it's happening here. Uh, it's always it's close to impossible for you to connect a bulb alone with the circuit without a bulb holder. 
But uh, in absence of a bulb holder, people can make some tricks in order to connect. But uh, the correct way of connecting uh, the bulb is by using or uh, putting it inside the bulb holder. Then it becomes a lamp. Although in most of the circuit, they would just write it as a bulb. But here is the combination of the two. Therefore, it becomes a lamp, not a bulb. Right. I mean, if you go to the shop, if your uh, bulb filament has bent and you go to the shop looking for a bulb do you go and say can i get a lamp or do you say can i get a bulb so you only buy a bulb if you say can i get a lamp they'll give you a bulb and a bulb holder that's that's the meaning or that's the difference between the two now we are saying that components are connected together with a certain wire which is called a conductor to complete the circuit. A conductor is a wire this, which allow current to flow through it. In circuit diagrams, components are represented by symbols. We have got to draw the symbols in order to complete the circuit diagram. Otherwise, we are going to, we are going to have to draw pictures of different components. And some of the components uh, come in different shapes and sizes, but being the same uh, component. Uh, like for example, if you have cells, as you see them here, all of these are cells, <laughs> but they are made in different shapes. Now, the question is, if a child or a, a learner is supposed to draw a cell, which one are you going to credit as a, as a teacher? Because there are so many and others might even give you something that is not existing claiming that this is a cell <laughs> now these are different cells and they uh, they look even a little bit complicated to draw so we've got to represent them with the standard international symbol that are used throughout so that it become easy for anyone to interpret that particular circuit. Now let's draw the symbols of different components. I think we, uh, at this point in time, we already have an idea on how to draw the symbols. Now, as I show you, like a cell, you must draw the cell wherever you are. Every time, pause the video a little bit, draw, and then later check as to whether you did the right thing. Did you draw the cell? Let's check. This is how it looked like. Did you draw something that looks like this? You must be very careful. Uh, the cell uh, sometimes looks similar to um, the capacitor, but they do not look the same. Now, with the cell, you've got this very short and thick line, and that is your negative. Short and thick is a negative. And on the other hand, you've got this long and thin line that is your positive terminal. So the terminals are different. Negative, short and thick and uh, positive, long, and thin. You must be very careful as and when you draw a cell. Now, we, we, we need to continue with a battery. Remember what we said, the battery is a combination of more than one cell connected together to perform maturity, not next to each other. Now, try to draw the battery, okay? Let's check as to whether you drew, you drew the correct thing. This is how the battery look like. Now, as you look onto the battery, these are the two cells adjacent to each other, and between them there is a line that shows that they are connected. And we must be very careful. This is a series circuit, and in a series circuit, very important, positive terminal is always connected to a negative terminal. We can also connect cells in parallel to form a battery but at the level of grade 7 we only connect the series battery or the series cells or cells in series together to form a battery we never connect them in parallel so this is a symbol of a battery it can it can have more than uh, two cells but for the sake of this exercise we are only going to be using two cells now we get to the switch this is how the switch look like now the thing about the switch is, this is technology, and you must understand, the next level, it's, it's technical subjects from the subject technology. Now, you are getting into the technical field, and which is electrical field. Therefore, you must do the correct symbol with respect to the electrical field that... Uh, 
this um, which is going to be fed by this level of education now very very important in electricity this is not um, in electrical field this is not science you know in science you may be allowed to draw a closed switch but in engineering electrical engineering we only draw open switches now we explain a switch as a device that opens the path of uh, current or close the path of current thereby allowing it to flow or stop but we furthermore in engineering use this cell as a protective device it's simple in science to just draw a closed switch because uh, the maximum voltage in most cases that is used there it's only 12 volts it's not that dangerous now if you connect a cell with a, a, a um, circuit with a closed switch the danger is if it is a high voltage circuit with perhaps um, uh, say for example um, 220 volts it might cause you might have a problem it may cause a danger that um, your circuit is going to to if, if if there's a short circuit there and your switch is closed you might cause fire if it's high voltage it becomes dangerous now if the switch is open you you may connect the supply and check with the open switch before you uh, you can allow current to flow through the circuit now it's not dangerous anymore so it's a protective device in a way now we also have what we call a lamb remember we talked of a lamb but this in this regard we represent it with a symbol of a bar but in a circuit we put it as a lamb now finally we have what you call a buzzer a buzzer like the sound like um, the name says uh, it makes a buzzing sound now that is a symbol of a buzzer that looks like a wine glass but very important uh, sometimes people confuse the symbol of a buzzer with that of a um, of a bell of which the bell is not at the level of grade seven but just want to show you they are a bit different this one looks like a wine glass but when you come to a bell it looks like the top of this symbol is turned over let's look at how the bell looks like just for interest sake you see it looks much like a mushroom Okay. so we are not using this for a buzzer the the correct symbol of a buzzer is that one that looks like a wine glass now here are the, the different symbols and that is the circuit on my left hand i've got a cell right hand i've got a light bulb and on top there i do have a, a switch now you need to connect these symbols together to form an electric circuit can you do that just try it i hope you have done that now let's check as to how it's going to look like there it is we've got the uh, light bulb on the right and on the left is your supply which is your cell and there on top it's your switch now different colors different colors of uh, connecting wires just shows you that uh, that side of the switch is a positive and now the return part of current to the negative it's it's, it's we may usually make it blue just to show that is a, a return part which is going to the negative but in actual sense the amount of current that is flowing on the positive side is exactly the same as the one that is flowing on the negative side. so people must not be mistaken to say perhaps if it's a high voltage circuit you may just uh, you are not allowed to touch the red one but the black one you can touch because it's it's, it's negative or it's it's it's, it's um, neutral then it's not gonna give you some shock no, 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 no. the amount of current in both is just the same now here we go this is now the symbols with pictures and um, use in second as, as 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 we use them in grade seven that is the new thing here i think is the light emitting diode which just shows the presence of presence of current in the circuit not actually give us light there there is our led don't use it extensively so but i think the rest is the ones that we've already spoken to 
Thank you very much. That is our lesson on electric circuits. The next topic that we'll be talking about is the magnetic circuit. We will be talking about how to create an electromagnet. My name is Asaf. Thank you very much. Uh, keep coming back to our YouTube channel and please don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep on producing more and more lessons. Thank you.